I'm back. <laughs> it's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori. Everything's unscripted. I don't know what's coming. My guests have their objects ready to be appraised. Let's see what my first guest has to offer. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Oh, good, Dr. Lori. It's Laura in Chicago. Hi, Laura. Can you back up so we can see you a little bit? There you go. Okay. So all kinds of stuff on the windowsill, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like my colored glass. Yeah, colored glass is great. Of course, it's great to uh, resell too. What do you want to show me? Well, today I have this. Um, back up, honey. Back up. You're too close. Can't see it all. Right Reticulated now. bowl. Okay. Okay. Can you move it over to your right? Yeah, there you go. Now it's in the shot. Okay. That's nice. How'd you acquire it? I got it at a thrift store. All right. And how much did you pay? Oh, about $2. All right, can I see the mark on the bottom? It says Germany, and then it has kind of a um, like some numbers. Can you show me the inside to the camera? And can you back up, please? Sure. There you go. All right, so it's a bread dish. It's reticulated. That means punched out, right? Ceramic, probably the middle part of the 20th century, if it says Germany. It's a nice piece, I would say, value on it, about $25. Not bad. Um, I have a question about the Germany sure. mark. Yep. Is, does that necessarily mean that it was before West Germany or could it be after West Germany? It could be either. It could be either. Okay. Yeah, that's well, I'm looking at the form and, of course, using my decades of expertise to tell you the date, right? Yes. Uh, question of the day, chocolate cake or apple pie? Ooh, chocolate cake. <laughs> okay, see ya. All right. Thanks thank for calling in from Chicago. Yeah. So when you're looking at Marx and you say, well, I don't know which Germany it is. I know West Germany would be after 1945 or after World War II, right? Uh, but what other kinds of Germany marks do you see? You might see Bavaria. You might see Germany. You might see just a maker's mark. But typically, the country marks are going to give you good information. What to look for? Look for the color of the mark. Look for the size of the mark. And I talk about marks on the video. So use the binge link to learn more. Guests are here showing me their already antiques and collectibles. All my values are based on actual sales records always. Hi, it's Dr. <laughs> Lori. How are you? What face is that? <laughs> well, I didn't expect to see mine up there. There you are, honey. There you are. I'm Hello. Dr. Lori. What's your first name, hon? Teresa. Hi, Teresa. Where are you calling from? Katy, Texas. Katy, Texas. Not too far from Houston. <laughs> That's so, right. Nice to see you. What can I look at for you today? Well, I found this oil at uh, a thrift store. Right there. I there. like it. Okay, there we go. Uh, it says Fred Hugo. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Can I see the back? Yeah. There's I like it. Hair. I like it. Uh, yeah, back up. Just straight back. Straight wow. back. There you go. Okay, look at this canvas. Canvas has a darkening. It's starting to get that beige color pretty nice. That's a Beva patch. So that patch, that white portion in the middle, basically means that at some point it's been in-painted or repaired or restored. Professionally done, but that's what that basic, that little white is. Um, American Stretcher, you've got a signed artist. Let's see the front. See, I laugh at everybody and it is hard. And over to your right. No, it's not. If you follow my directions, it's easy. Go back. Go straight back, sweetie. Straight back. Straight back. There it is. Ah. It's a nice painting. Um, it's a little heavy-handed in, in type, but I do like the basic composition. Um, I would. Uh, how big is it? Is it nine by? Uh, uh, the actual uh, painting is nine by twelve, yeah. and then it's got a four-inch wide. Yeah, frame. it's got a whopping frame. The whopping mm -hmm. frame is to increase the value a little bit. So. I'd probably go $75 to $95 for it with the frame. Um, it's a nice painting. I would say that, you know, you want to get a little bit more substance and a little less frame when you're looking to collect art. How much did you pay? $5. Oh, $5. <laughs> $5 is great. Good for you. At the thrift store? Yeah. Great, great, great. Was it sitting alone? It was just sitting there, and I rarely ever had seen an oil painting, so I picked it up. You know, we used to joke in graduate school that art, you know, art usually likes to be alone. <laughs> you know, like, I want to be alone, you know. So usually the good stuff is so, for some reason usually by itself. But keep looking at those thrift stores. Oh, chocolate cake or apple pie? 
Oh, anything with chocolate is good. Anything with, with chocolate. Teresa, nice to meet you. You as well. Thank you. Thanks for being with me. I like those kinds of pieces. They're kind of quick, you know, quickly done. A lot of a lot of activity in the breaststroke. I like that when you want to look for something. People equate that with impressionism. And, you know, while the breaststroke is quick in impressionism, with a piece like that, you're, you know that that piece is going to be of the mid 20th century. But lots of artists painting in that style. Here's my next guest. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. Hi, Dr. Lori. How are, How are you? you? I'm good. I'm calling good. from St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada. Nice. What's your first name? Uh, Tara, sorry. That's all right, Tara. No reason to be sorry. So tell me, <laughs> Tara, what's happening? Do you have a mug, Tara? I don't have a mug yet. I haven't done my Dr. Lori shopping right yet. So Well, holiday time is coming, so I hope you will do that. And uh, for those of you who don't have a Dr. Lori mug, you can get them right here on the channel or their tote bags and t-shirts. What <laughs> can you show it. me today? Um, I have a Nippon Ferner. Um, Back up, honey. There you go. Yeah. Um, my arm's not long enough. <laughs> so it's got, I don't know how you. Well, I'd like to see the whole piece staying still in front of Sorry. your face would be good. There you go. All right. And then I like to see the inside. All right. And then do you have a mark on the bottom that says Nippon with a wreath and like an M? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Morimura Brothers Nippon. So it's early 20th century. It's a nice piece. Uh, porcelain, hand gilded. All that's gilt work, too. Uh, as I said, probably dates to 1900, 1925. How much did you pay for it? Where'd you get it? Um, it was at an auction um, mm -hmm. and probably less than 20. I don't yeah. go over 20. It's probably worth 45 to 65 dollars retail. Okay. I'm giving you a range because you have to find that buyer. So people right. will say, oh, you can't get those values. People are coming back to me. I can't tell you how many people this week said, Dr. Lair, I just wanted to tell you, you appraised my piece for this number and I sold it for that. You appraised my piece for that number and I sold it for more than that. You appraised that, my piece at this number, I sold it for that. I've had galore people saying, these folks who are saying that you can't get those values that you're quoting, Dr. Lori, are wrong. So it's not me. You know, they're based on actual sales records. This is where the pieces sell. So nice to see you. Hey, chocolate okay. cake or apple pie, the question of the day. I think apple pie, as long as I have the ice cream with it. Well, okay, got to have the ice cream. I got you. <laughs> nice to see you, Tara. Thanks for calling in from Canada. Thank and you. I have something special for all of you on the Special and Shop page. That's right. That's, of course, where we put all of our discounts and other important things. There's going to be a limited space only event, a special event, a class where you can actually have me to yourself. <laughs> yeah, so that's on the Specials and Shop page. And I'll teach you all that stuff you wanted to know. Um, at the time of this live stream, there's a special for that particular special event class with Dr. Lori. So check it out at the specials and shop page. Oh, gosh. Uh, the world needs more people like me. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are a lot, not a lot of experts out there anymore. I had to say that. There are a lot of people who want to think they're experts or want to act like experts. But, you know, expertise takes a lot of time. I'm very happy to share my expertise with all of you. So nice to see all of you. I'm glad you're enjoying Dr. the channel Lori. and sharing the channel. Hi, Dr. Lori here. How are you? Hey, good. How are you, Dr. Lori? Good. What's your name? Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth, who are you chatting with? My daughter, I said, yeah, she can have children over here. <laughs> <She's> 18, <laughs> okay. That's She's 18. Okay. <laughs> nice to see you. So show me what you got. I have this um, bronze and metal. Um, can you back up so I can see the whole piece? Oh, sorry, sweetie. That's all right. Don't apologize. No problem. Right there is good. Okay. She so I've got um, a nice figure. Mm -hmm. Do you notice how her one hip is up higher? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's called contrapposto. That's so you can actually uh, shift the weight. And when they're making sculpture, it's about shifting the weight. The famous contrapposto form is, of course, Michelangelo's David. That's a nice piece. Is it pretty heavy? looks like it's bronze. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Ma How'd you acquire it? Uh, at an estate sale. How much did you pay? 200 Did you pay 200 for it? How tall is it? It's 22 inches tall. All right. Can I so see the back? 17 and... Um, so 17 plus the base is 22. Yes, ma'am. That's math. I think that might be five inches for the base, but that's math. I don't do that. <laughs> Last time I was um, waiting to talk to you and I can't find the piece of paper, but. Um, okay. That's a foundry yeah. mark. Those little medallions that you might yeah. see are foundry marks. So they usually will indicate a, um, usually a, a city like Paris. And I'll tell you something about the foundry, a fabrique, 
basically a fabrication foundry, that kind of thing. Um, that piece looks like it's late 19th century, bronze, very nice and big. I would say value on it, about $900 retail. So you did okay for your $200 investment. Um, and again, once you if you see a actual signature, we might be able to bump that value up a little bit. It says, so you, you it, can, says, it says G. Colin, C-O-L-I-N. C-O-L-I-N? Yes, C-O-L-I-N. Yeah, yeah, you're about $900. Um, right. Yeah, about $900. So would you flip it or would you keep it? Well, that I means you're keeping like, it. My husband whenever, likes it, so. <laughs> whenever you, uh, whenever you, whenever somebody hesitates, that's usually, a, eh, I'm kind of on the fence. I'd like to keep it, but I probably should flip it. But whatever, whatever you decide to this do. I forgot where, <laughs> Elizabeth, where are you calling from? Charleston, South Carolina. I forgot to ask you. And I forgot <laughs> to ask you, chocolate cake or apple pie? Ooh, chocolate cake. <laughs> and don't forget to, well, chocolate cake is good. Thanks, Elizabeth. Don't forget Bye. to sign up for my newsletter, Elizabeth, Bye. and all of you. The newsletter, Thank of course, you. is at, you're welcome, at drlaurieV.com. So that was from an estate sale. There's lots of great things at, an, at estate sales. The newsletter will tell you other great things, right? So subscribe there. It's very easy to do. Just go to drlaurieV.com. There's a thumbs up. It says free. Put in your email address, and then we'll send it out to you when it's ready. And it comes out regularly. I've got guests galore, lots of stuff to talk about. Great. Randy found a painting that has a monogram. Do you recognize the initials to be an artist that's well known? That's a crack up, right, Randy? I got to tell you. So, I mean, although, you know, I know you all think I'm a magician, <laughs> you have to show me something. So send a picture to the website, right? Show me something. Show me the piece. And then I'll look at the initials and then I'll be able to, of course, match it up. But a lot of artists will sign with uh, initials, in fact. I didn't see that last one, something about where do you sell that to get $900? Paige, the market will bear $900 for a bronze sculpture, figural bronze sculpture like that. So where do you sell it? The whole market. So if, you, so if, if I said to you, go over to this person, go over to that person, you could sell it here. There's many places that, where it sells for that. That's how we come up with these appraised values. They're based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold, not just numbers, based on sales records where somebody had a transaction take place. It could be uh, an auction. It could be eBay. It could be Ruby Lane. It could be other uh, Etsy and other online um, sales marketing situations. It could be a private sale, but all of these are listed. And if you do your research, of course, you will find actual sales records. So everyone goes, where do you go? Do you just go to this person? That is not how it works. You have to do the work. So I'm happy to help you anyway. I always price my items just above what Dr. Lori's appraisal amount is um, to get your price. Well, you have to go a little bit higher, Jackie. That makes sense. So you can negotiate down to the retail value. So you might go up 50 bucks or so, but basically my values are based on what the market will bear, period. You know, they're not lower they're not higher. They're not outrageous. You know, people who don't know how the market works usually ask that question. I see that a lot. Not so much you, Paige, but a lot of folks who are on the, who are commenting and making, you know, are saying, oh, well, you can't get that for it. You may not be able to get that for it, but somebody did get that for it and they worked to get that for it. I want you to do the same work so you get the value that it deserves. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. What's your name? My name is Sarah. I am in Stevensville, Michigan. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you from Michigan. What's happening? Uh, not much. I have um, a piece that was in a jewelry chest that belonged to my three times great grandmother. You need grandmother. to back way up. It okay. is a three dot. Sorry about the hand tremors. I got Lyme disease. Um, That's fine, honey. I'm sorry you have Lyme disease. Is, is, are you taking something for it? Can it be controlled? Um, yeah, it can get to a state of remission, which is what I'm on medication for right now. So, okay. but good. I didn't mean to pry. I just no, care no. about you. All right. I, I hope you feel better. No, the tremors are fine. So, okay. Um, so you were saying it's a $3 piece of currency. Yeah. It's a $3, uh, bill that says, uh, the Republic of Texas it's dated 1840. Right. right um, right. it does have some damage on it. It was kept like folded up in the chest, but Okay, a couple of things with these. Typically, we see these sell in the fifty to seventy-five dollar range, so okay. it came down in the family, right? Yes. And the problem with yours is condition. That's I've seen them in great condition sell at one hundred and fifty or much more, but okay. in that condition, you're not going to be able to command that. And 
Paper conservation to repair a piece of paper is really expensive because <laughs> it's very difficult to do. Yeah. So okay. that's basically what I have. I like it, though, and I like the interest in currency. Of course, the history of Texas is a long and varied one. Uh, of course, remember the Alamo and such just around the right. middle part of the 19th century. So that's a nice piece. Um, I like it. In the meantime, you could put it in a solander box, which is an acid-free box to protect okay. it. You know, you might decide if you wanted to frame it, but most people will say, oh, a solander box is the way to go because maybe I don't want, you know, a $3 bill up, you know, uh, on the wall framed up. It's up to you. Um, but anyway, nice to see you. Thanks so much. Chocolate cake or apple pie for the question of the day? Ooh, um, I'll go with apple pie just because it's fall, but anything with carbs in it, I'll eat, so... Uh, me too. <laughs> nice to see you. Take good care. I like currency as a collectible. I like coins as a collectible. I always say if you're starting with your grandkids on something, coins are a nice thing to start to collect because they can handle them. Okay, you're not supposed to handle coins, but if they handle them, you know, they're going to be relatively durable, that kind of thing. Um, that's basically what we're seeing more and more uh, throughout. But I like I like to start kids young with collections and currency and coins or such. Uh, hi, Penny. Would a red wing jug that has an accidental blue brush stroke be worth more? Sometimes accidents, if you will, uh, will be worth more because they relate to rarity. But usually purist, purist collectors who pay the most, right, they want it to look the way it's supposed to look. But if, if that particular accident is uh, an accident by, you know, one of the great designers and you can prove that, then you might be able to bump up the value a little bit. I do think that when you are trying to relist things, if, if we're talking about reselling, I think highlighting that accident is not a bad idea because then, of course, your piece has a little bit more rarity. Good question. Very good question. And thank you for the super chats and the super stickers. They, of course, help support the channel. And you also can help support the channel not only with super chats and super stickers, but if you share the channel. So if you'll share the channel, that would be helpful too. We really need to um, move forward with respect to sharing the channel. Tell everybody about it, put it on social media, share the links. How do you tell if a vintage Chinese watercolor is an actual watercolor or a print of some kind? I teach you this on videos on this channel, Lana. I mean, my goodness, if you use the binge link, right, which is at the specials and shop page, scroll down, it'll say binge link, it's very big. Click on that. It will show you all of my videos, right? And it'll show you the most current ones first. So you won't miss those videos that I'm doing that are not only on the channel, but other places. So, but when it comes to looking at that, the loop will help you, right? The loop, of course, which you can also get through the specials and shop page. Um, but basically, um, not only will the loop help you, but looking for striations, looking in fact for uh, small elements that relate to the support or the textile, right? So, and then you can see how it will look. If you see little consistent dots or something mechanical, machine made, then you know you have a fake. Hey, it's yeah. Dr. Lori. How you doing? I am good. How are you? Good. What's your name? Uh, my name is Mark from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Hi, Mark. You know, Mark, you got a big smile when we came on. It was like, hey, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> nice to see you, Mark. So tell me, are you a thrifter, Mark? I am thrifter and reseller. How's it going? Pretty good, actually. Great, great. Yeah. So show me what you got, hon. Okay. Oh, I like that. Go. What so, made you buy it? Why did you buy it? When you saw it, what did you what did you think? Uh, it was just quite unique and interesting. Yeah, very contemporary. I also, yeah, I also yeah. just like the signature on it. Um, yeah. Just the way it was done, it was very kind of unique. Get really close to the camera so we can talk about the way it was done. Keep coming. Okay. Oh, and I love the bug. <laughs> I'm not a bug person, but I love the bug. Very nice, very nice. So that's a really nice piece. That's a piece of seriography, which of course is a silk screen. It is layered on top. It's looking like Japanese woodblock prints, but it's not a woodblock. And it re references, of course, the traditions of Japan and their woodblock or printing processes. That's a very nice piece. Probably dates pretty late, late 1900s, early 2000s. Is it dated at all? Uh, yeah, so it's signed by, uh, oops, sorry, I have here. Frank, oh, sorry, David Lance Goins, 1985. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And right. it was for the 40th anniversary of the Hiroshima, and it's an artist proof. Nice, and it's nice. Signed, yeah, it's 18 by 24. What did you pay? 1250. 
Oh my Canadian. God, 12, $12.50 Canadian? That's right, yeah. Mark, I like yeah. it. <laughs> I like it to the tune of $300. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> 300 US, I'm sorry. Mine are always US. Based on actual US? sales records. You might get 500 if you were to um, sell it in a different area. Okay, what, what do I right. mean by that? Well, a couple of things about it. I get it out of that frame because I think that frame is really not doing it much justice. It's kind okay. of an inexpensive frame. Um, but that particular piece, why do I think you might be able to get 500? Closer to holiday time, I think you'll be able to get 500. And at the anniversary times of historic events, it goes up a little bit. But today, it's worth 300 bucks. Nice. Okay. My opinion on that is a really good buy. Very, very good. Perfect. Very excited. Um, yeah. It's artist proofed A through Z. Is there any big significance where it's Z on this one? <laughs> No, um, artist proofs usually have an have either one of these two things: EA, which is oftentimes used in Europe, right, um, or AP, right, and then Z sometimes indicates that they are using a different state of the print. So they printed one and then they changed something and they printed another one very similarly like it. And some artists prefer to use A through Z or Z. Um, but basically, in this case, you don't have you have AP for an artist proof, right? Oh, it says artist proof, and then it has uh, A through Z on it. Okay, so they have art. They have twenty six artist proofs. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they done. That's what they've done in this particular case. They're different on different prints, so you have to okay. identify it for different prints. Beautiful job, three hundred bucks. Good for you. Apple Perfect. pie or chocolate cake? Oh, chocolate cake all the way. Nice to meet you, Mark. <laughs> Keep it up. Thank you. You guys are doing great thrifting. The stuff is out there. You have to go get it. Right for your own collection, for a, a for or for reselling, whatever you like to do. Maybe you're downsizing and you just want to know the best way to be able to, in fact, learn what your pieces are worth. Video calls with me. I make it very easy to book them at drlaurieV.com. I have found very valuable pieces with people during video calls. Oh my gosh, Dr. Lori, I didn't know that they're walking around the house. I'm like, stop, wait, hold it. There's that. So video calls are easy to book, and a lot of you like this format, but a lot of you don't want to participate here. So you want to, in fact, do your own video calls. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? Hey, great. How are you? I'm good. Now, wait a second. Uh, I remember you cut your t-shirt, but I appreciate you buying your t-shirt. You're living and taking care of your mom, right? Exactly. What's yes. What's your first name? Lindsay. Lindsay. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Nice to see you. So nice tell me you. what's happening. Are you shopping? Yes, I am, and learning and learning, and finally I got to get on here with you in the afternoon. But right. I did find a oil uh, on on. Uh, Show me what you've got, Lindsay. Okay, let me turn it around here. Let's see. Oh, okay, you've got an oil painting. Yeah, there with a go. knife. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Kind of looks like Germany to me. Exactly. Austria, Germany. Yeah. So you know, yeah. landscapes. One of those little covered bridges that are everywhere throughout much of that part of Europe. Um, on okay. the back, is it oil on canvas or oil on board? Like, can you knock on it? Is it, it is oil on a canvas board. Okay. Is it signed? At, oh, it's an oil on canvas board. Okay. What she's showing you there is something called artist board or illustration board. It's a piece of board, cardboard typically, or other types of board. And then they wrap a canvas around it. Artists will use it oftentimes so they can, in fact, paint in situ or paint directly from the scene. So that's why you're seeing it here. It probably wasn't painted in a studio, probably was painted right outside. So okay. let's see the front again. Alrighty. All right. How much did you pay? Where'd you get it? I bought it at Salvation Army about three years ago for $2.99. How big is it? It is 18 by 24. All right, that makes sense. So that's a standard size. That's typically what you see. I have to say that the composition with all the peaks kind of move your eye across, but you're not yeah. moving up and down very much. It's an okay painting. I okay. would say value value on that painting, $150, including the frame. Okay. Not bad for your, what, $2.99 investment? Exactly, $2.99 plus tax. <laughs> and when you try to market it, right, when you list it or try to sell it, highlight the place, right? Talk okay. about that particular place. Don't forget to, of course, show the back. Don't forget to give them a close-up. You know, a, a picture's tell a thousand words. And on my, on my newsletter, on my website and the blog and the newsletter, I give you tips on how to sell. Selling tips are there too. So if you don't know what you're doing, I'm going to teach you. Anyway, <laughs> nice to see you. Hey, chocolate cake or apple pie? 
Uh, chocolate cake. How about your mom? Would she like apple pie or chocolate cake? Both. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when you reach a certain age, you can eat anything. So nice yeah. to see you. Thank uh, you. That was Lindsay. My pleasure. Nice to see you. Good luck with your mom. So I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm happy to be with all of you. My guests are here. Everything's unscripted. I don't know what's coming. So I'm giving appraisals so people can learn what they've got and what it's really worth. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Hi, my name is Dinah. Hi, Dinah. Where are you? I'm in the uh, U.S. You're in the U.S.? Okay. Uh, hi. Um, uh, Can I see the object you want me to appraise? I'm sorry. Go ahead, honey. Yeah. This is the one that I got. It's, uh, mm. it's from, um, it says it's from a church. And this one is, seems it's very old print with hand um, colored. If you see, it is a, a, a Mary and a Jesus, right? Um, That's right. Yeah, and it says uh, something like down there, imaging, I think that's Italy from Italy. That's right. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I don't know how early it could be this one. Okay, let's go back so we can see the whole piece. Can you show us the Madonna and child? There you go. Now that piece is in a frame. Did oh, it's in a, the back of a chair. Huh? Yeah. Right. What am I Sorry. looking at? That piece has been framed into a cabinet. cabinet. Correct. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Where did you get it, and how much did you pay? Oh, I got it. The Can you stop moving, Dinah? I'm Can you sorry. stop moving everything? Can you stay still? There you go. So, I'm, do you want me to praise the piece or the whole the whole cabinet? The whole cabinet. All right. So, where did you get it? A thrift store, a yard sale, an estate sale? Yeah, a yard sale. Yard sale. How much did you pay? The whole thing. Uh, uh, um, I think about um, maybe uh, fifty dollars. Maybe fifty dollars for it. Uh, well, you can see that the that the um, wood, of course, is oak. You can see that that oak chair and actually cabinets it's a panel door so it's a cabinet but you could sit on it that particular piece dates to about 1925 yeah about 1925 and then you have a picture in the back right yeah, so they decided yeah. to put that print in the back this piece is probably being used in church environments right and that picture is of course 19th century from the 1800s in italy it's a hand colored and hand gilded embossed print value on the whole thing about 250 dollars. thank you all right how about this print the print is 19th century as i said it is italian okay. and the pieces of course together about 250 dollars Thank you very much. So for her $50 investment, she did okay. It's not uncommon for a lot of ecclesiastical or church-related, religious-related pieces to, of course, be multifunctional, a chair, a seat, as well as someone you would actually pay homage to or a print like that. That's not uncommon. Um, hers is a little bit different because it's 20th century. We usually see you know, she has a 19th century print in a 20th century structure. Right, that kind of thing. Thank you for the super chats and the super stickers. You're helping to support the channel so I can do more videos for all of you. So I appreciate those very much. Thank you. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. And I'm looking at somebody's ceiling. <laughs> okay, not prepared, moving on. Remember, if, you're, if your connection's too slow, or if you're not prepared, or if you're not there, or whatever you're doing, we've got to move on. And also, I want it to be a pleasant experience for everybody who's watching. So, you know, if your connection is too slow or, you know, you can't move it, I might have to move on if I can't hear your audio, that kind of thing. That's good. So anyway, no, there was not a mirror where the print is now. No, not usually in churches. Are you going to see mirrors? Mirrors, of course, not usually in the Jewish uh, community, but uh, a mirror in the back of that would not have been right, Rowan, but good guess. All right. Let's see. Uh, my next guest. Let's see. Hi, it's Dr. Lori. How are you? A mirror in the back of that would not have been right, Rowan. But good guess. You're here in the back and I can't hear you. All right. Let's see. No. Nope. Oh, All right. She, she, I don't think she realizes that we're on or she's listening to me in the background. So this is Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori. Appraisals with all of you. It's good to be with you. Thank you for joining me. And of course, I'm the expert. I'm giving you expert answers. I'm the PhD antiques appraiser. Here's my next guest. Hi, it's Dr. Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm fine. And you? I'm fine. We were on together before. You're in Louisiana. Yes, ma'am. What's your name, sweetie? Virginia. 
Virginia, I apologize. I couldn't remember. Virginia, what have you got to show me? This is my boyfriend's. I don't know what it is. It's just, it's like. That's your boyfriend's? Is he a good yeah. guy? You like him? Oh, yeah. We've been together. Oh, like yes. A long Can time. you back up for me? Back up a little bit. That's a batik print, right? So similar to tie dyeing. That's a batik print, probably made in, of course, the Caribbean. It looks like it's actually a piece of textile that's put into a frame. I would say, how would he pay a couple bucks for that? Yeah, probably. Value, value on that's probably 25 bucks. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks Thank very much. So thrift store, a lot of, a lot of you couples are telling me that you go out thrifting together, you know, that, you know, my husband collects this and I collect that. We have a good time or my partner goes out with me and I have a good time, you know, uh, shopping and sourcing for our resale business. Some of you are doing it as a side hustle, as you will say, but a lot of things not clear on this. Sometimes you said artist sign prints are not worth much. And other times I've heard you say they are. Well, Lana, it depends on the print. Okay. Just because it's signed doesn't mean it's valuable. And just because it's unsigned, it doesn't mean it's valuable. So you're saying, I've heard you say this and I've heard you say that. It depends on the piece I'm dealing with. So it's, uh, this is why this is not easy for a lot of people. People go, I don't know how she does this. Well, it's years and years and years of expertise. But having said that, um, when you look at the piece, I want you to look for certain elements, certain things, certain traits or characteristics. Condition. I, I like you to look for a signature, but maybe there's an artist's signature and maybe there's also a printer's signature. That means something good in certain prints and that means something lousy in other prints. It's a lot to learn, but I'm going to teach you one thing at a time, one step at a time. And of course, if you want to learn more about prints, you can search prints right here in the channel and you'll learn more. But your question is well taken and I appreciate it. I just have to, you have to understand that, you know, I might say one thing about one print and then I might say something that sounds like a contradiction about another. So, uh, and again, our questions of the, day, of the day are so all of you who are commenting can make their comments. I want to hear from them too, right? There you go. Are there small Roseville USA pottery vases valuable? Some of the small ones are valuable. It depends on which one. It depends on the pattern. It depends on if you have a real or a fake because there are fake Rosevilles out there too. Some people like the small ones. They're not worth as much as the large, you know, you know, massive pieces. But again, yeah, there is a collectibles market for small Roseville pieces. Sure. So anyway, well, I'm Dr. Lori. That was fun. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'll see you next time.